the point there, does he not, Frank Warren? Not only the money, but the time, all the effort that's gone into this fight by so many parties. And let's not forget, these are the two best cruiserweights in the world. This is a huge fight. Uh, Natalie, the million-dollar question then, where was David Hay? <laughs> Good question. We got wind of the fact he was in and around the area. We thought he might be in the building. Uh, so, of course, I rushed downstairs to try and find out what was going on. Now, it turned out he was stuck in a little bit of traffic, but he arrived at about quarter past two, as he said he was contractually obliged to. Now, he's been training out in Miami, doing warm weather training. He is still running on Miami time because, of course, the fight on Saturday night is going to be around 2 a.m. for the benefit of American audiences. So David Hay has tried to stay on American time. He was training at 2 in the morning. He didn't go to bed till 6.30 a.m got up in time to come for this for, uh, for 2 o'clock, for a 2.30 start, to find that he wasn't being allowed in because Frank Warren's camp had done the press conference and uh, his promoter, was, uh, not promoter, his, his trainer was saying he turned on the telly to find out he'd been told he was disrespectful and he almost couldn't get into his boxer shorts, he told us. Let me catch you up with what David Hay said to me a little earlier on. Let's have a look. Still talking, doing all the same interviews I would have done, but the difference is I had some sleep. I went to bed at 6, 6.30 a.m. this morning to get me up at 11 o'clock, it's ridiculous. I'm used to, in ideal world, I have 10 hours sleep straight through. I trained hard early this morning. Obviously, the fight's going out live at 2 a.m. So, you know, I, I need my sleep. We, we, we already agreed that I'll be here at 2 for 2.30. We've already agreed, it's already been agreed. But obviously, they tried to change it earlier to cut a couple hours out of my sleep. But, you know, I was expecting these type of, uh, these type of moves. But I'm here now, uh, I'm healthy, I'm f fully rested. And this is what that's the main thing make to make sure your athletes uh, are hydrated make sure they've had their sleep make sure they're healthy that's the main that should be the main goal not you know sort a silly deadline for a reporter which I'm sure the deadline is not a big difference now they're saying that there was uh, an hour basically it started at, it ended up starting about one it would have ended up starting about it two. two it was, I, I, it was always it was always two o'clock to me and no stage have we agreed that it'd be at we actually we requested it to be at four o'clock they said no, two o'clock, so late, so we could do it. So we said, okay, two o'clock it is. And then for some reason, it magically went down to 12.30. So, uh, you know. So they've interpreted this as you are running scared. You're scared of meeting Enzo McInerney here. I'm, I'm, I'm here now, you know. I'm here when I said I'd, when I said I'd be here. And I'm here. I'm, I'll be here. I'll be at the weigh-in tomorrow when I'm contracted to be at the weigh-in. I'll be at the fight when I said I'd be there. Simple as. It's obviously been a lot of fighting talk leading up to the bout on uh, Saturday night. You saying perhaps that he hasn't fought anyone as good as you. All yeah. the people he's fought have I never been. I haven't said it. It's a, it's a fact. He's never, he's never fought uh, somebody who's the world champion. I'm the world champion. I went to Paris to beat the world champion. The guy who had the ring magazine belt, you know, the number one fighter in the world, the linear champion, the man who beat the man who beat the man. That's who I went and beat. He hasn't done that. He won a vacant title. Johnny Nelson retired, gave his belt up, and two guys fought for it, him and some other dude. That doesn't make you a world champion. It means you just happen to pick up a belt here and there. This is the first time he's actually getting the ring of a true champion. So what about Frank Warren's assertion that you've never ever fought on a stage like this? You've only ever fought places like York Hall, you won't be able to cope. We'll see on Saturday. He's just dead. he's hoping that. He really is hoping that. Because Frank Warren's gone on record and said that if I beat Enzo McAnally, he'll retire from the boxing game. So I wonder if he I wonder if he'll stick to that. I'm not sure. As the fight gets closer and he realizes that I'm in great shape, maybe he'll start getting the jitters and uh, maybe retract that statement. Tell boxing fans watching, or, or people that maybe only tune in for the big ones, yeah. what kind of fighters you guys are and, and why it's going to be such an interesting contest. It's going to be an interesting contest because I'm the best fighter in the world. He's the second best fighter in the world. And who, is, is the second best going to be able to rise to the occasion? I don't think so. I'm going to be a lot better than I've ever been before. I'm a lot, in a lot better shape. I'm a lot more hydrated. Everything. For instance, I, I've been drinking as much water as I want to. Before the Mormick fight, I hadn't, didn't have a drink for a long, long time. You know, this time around, completely different, healthy, having plenty of food. I feel strong. All my weights have gone up. All my running's gone up. All my sparring's have got more sparring than ever. Everything has gone perfectly. And unfortunately for this poor guy, Enzo Macronelli, he's going to be at the end of my right hand. The aim maker. He says he knows the chinks in your armour. What are his? He's, he's going to get in the ring with me. That's the big chink in his armour. He's going to get in the ring and he's going to get knocked out. You know, I've seen him fight before. It's not one specific thing he does wrong. He does pretty much his whole style was wrong, for me anyway. You know, as soon as as soon as he gets in the ring with me, everything he does it will just suit me down to the ground. And uh, the harder he tries, the quicker he'll go. If he tries to run away, I'll track him down and knock him out. He can't stand toe to toe and trade with me. He'll come off second best. He can't outbox me. 
You know, I've got a great amateur pedigree. I was the second best heavyweight in the world as an amateur. I got a silver medal in the world championships, the first boxer to get to the finals of that championship. You know, so I've been, I've been around. I boxed for England for many years. Since the age of 17, I've been representing England on the international stage. So I've been in the ring with uh, good guys, top Russians, top Cubans, top Americans, for, since I was 17 years old. You know, he's only just stepped up now. It's his first fight. He's actually fighting someone who's actually not turned up to lose, who's actually turned up to win. You know, someone who's had plenty of notice. It's the first time he's been in the ring with anybody with a bit of ambition. And you talked about how he's going to feel numb after the first round. He's still quite confident predicting yeah. you can knock him out he's first. Gonna go, he's going to go. If he's lucky enough to hear the bell for the first round to, to, to go back to the corner for the second round, he'll realise that I'm telling the truth and he'll realise he's in a world of hurt and the only thing that's going to happen is he's going to get smashed to bits. Them's are fighting words, Natalie. Uh, I get the, the, the impression there. I've got, to, I've got to say, I thought that David Hay might have turned up and been a little bit meek, a bit mild, a bit perhaps embarrassed, but he's on the front foot there. He's holding firm. Um, OK, tomorrow's weigh-in. That's the next appointment then, scheduled contractually for David Hay. Uh, tell us about that. Do you think he will turn up on time? This is so interesting because David Hay contractually, you've just heard there, says he's meant to turn up at four o'clock. Now, Frank Warren says the weigh-in's at seven o'clock. That's a big difference, three hours difference. And for boxers, that would mean David Hay having to starve himself for another three hours. Now, David Hay's camp is saying this is all mind games on the part of Frank Warren and, and Team Calzaghe, who, of course, coach Macaronelli. They're hoping that this will put him off his game and... Really, we, d we don't quite know what's going to happen. If the two of them turn up separately, we don't know whether quite yet. We're trying to ascertain whether this is within the, the rules. Is this legal? Because they need to have a doctor there. They need to have uh, someone there from the Boxing Federation to d make sure it's all official, it's all going ahead. The, the two boxes are meant to weigh in together. So if one's weighing in at seven and one's weighing in at four, well, there's sure to be fireworks. Of course, we're going to keep you posted throughout the day tomorrow on Satan Sports News, a really big day leading up to this huge British fight, the biggest British fight in 15 years. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks, Natalie. I mean, it's 20 to 4. Now, surely there can't be any more twists and turns in this tale towards the Battle of Britain. The biggest fight in some time. Uh, I'm sure there might be some more twists and turns tomorrow. Thanks again, Natalie, there at the O2 Arena. A reminder.